They weren't just pioneers, they were the pure, raw definition of punk. I am an antichrist. I am an antichrist. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be taking a look at the history of the Sex Pistols. We weren't the nice boys they thought we were. We aren't nice boys. We were nasty little bastards. Punk rock band The Sex Pistols started as The Strand in London, England in 1972. The name became The Sex Pistols two years later after guitarist Steve Jones and drummer Paul Cook were joined by bassist Glenn Matlock. Finally, in 1975, the Pistols got their distinctive identity when singer John Lydon, also known as Johnny Rotten, arrived on the scene, recruited by influential manager Malcolm McLaren. The Sex Pistols personified the concept of rebellion. Their music and personalities defined punk as no other group before or since. Raw, writhing, and totally undisciplined, their work was the essence of the punk aesthetic, with influences from McLaren and designer Vivian Westwood. The Pistols built a following with violent gigs at increasingly important venues. Early supporters were labeled the Bromley Contingent and included future stars like Susie Sue and Billy Idol. Even then, everyone who saw them knew music was forever changed. Yet amazingly, considering their profound impact, the real Sex Pistols were together for just over two years, released one studio album and only a handful of singles. Signed to EMI in late 1976, they quickly unleashed anarchy in the UK. The song was a battle cry that caught cultural fire and spurred others to use music as a political weapon. Weeks later, the Pistols' infamous London TV appearance added fuel to that fire as Jones gleefully tossed off F-bombs. <laughs> Well, that's it for tonight. Mainstream press attacked them, EMI dropped them, but that only brought the Sex Pistols more attention. And blind acceptance is a sign of fools who stand in line. Right. A&M Records snatched them up and dropped them ten days later. After finally signing with Virgin, the group began work on their one and only studio album. But differences between Matlock and the rest resulted in his replacement by Rotten's recruit, John Simon Ritchie, or Sid Vicious, in 1977. From then on, it was a steady stream of violence, obscenities, and scandal. Case in point, the Sex Pistols' second single compared the Queen to a fascist regime. God save the Queen! The fascist regime! Its defiance spoke loud and clear to a receptive audience of angry youth, and the refrain of no future became a punk catchphrase. Even as Britain's most censored song, the track surged to number two, with many believing the chart was fixed to keep it out of the top spot. Shortly after, the Pistols played a controversial riverboat show during Queen Elizabeth II's Silver Jubilee celebrations that ended in arrests and destruction. Over the next few months, two more singles hit the top ten. Finally, in late 1977, the buzzed about album Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols debuted at number one in the UK. A savage attack on the establishment and good taste, the record's title made it the subject of an obscenity trial, as bollocks is a euphemism for a male body part. Judges reluctantly ruled in the pistol's favor. And we don't care. The group's first U.S. tour started in early 1978, but was disrupted by political anxiety, illnesses, and tensions between volatile members. Too many problems, so why am I here? Sid Vicious's girlfriend Nancy Spungen was an explosive piece of the puzzle as the pair had a drug-fueled codependent relationship. Things came to a head following a California show when Johnny Rotten left the band. Oh bollocks, why should I carry on? He later formed Public Image Limited while Sid Vicious recorded a solo live album. Look at there, here she comes. 
However, Vicious's life spiraled out of control after he was accused of his girlfriend's murder and jailed in New York. The night of his release, February 2, 1979, Vicious died of a heroin overdose. The others carried on, releasing some successful singles and contributing to the soundtrack of a fictional film about the Sex Pistols, The Great Rock and Roll Swindle. These works did have their fans, but lacked the intensely felt ferocity of the real Sex Pistols records. Eventually, the surviving members reunited for a lucrative 1996 tour and played together several times afterwards. Despite their short existence, the Sex Pistols are consistently cited as one of punk rock's most influential bands. For a group that proudly rallied around the cry of anarchy, they left a legacy that is surprisingly solid and destined to last. Ah, ha, ha. Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? Good night. <laughs>